Hey guys, my name is Shivam Kejriwal. I recently graduated from Shiv Nadi University with a degree in physics. In this video, I want to reminisce the various places on campus one last time and show you around its many beautiful hotspots. I made a similar campus tour when I first came to SNU and I'm very glad that I got to return to campus this semester after the lockdown and revisit these places one last time. I hope you enjoy this quick recap. Let's start from my room in the TARS. Now, many of you wouldn't stay here, ever. Most of the students are accommodated in the hostels and I've made many videos from there. But for whatever reason, in these last few days, the admin decided to send me to the TARS and I didn't really have anything to complain. The room was in a 3BHK apartment with a common bathroom and washroom being shared by just 5 people. And while I loved staying in the hostel blocks, this was definitely a new experience and a welcome one. The closest dining hall to the tower, a place where you'd have your breakfast, lunch and dinner is Dining Hall 3 or DH3 for short. It's a small place which may get crowded at times but definitely way more convenient than going to the other dining halls at the opposite end of the vast campus. And as you move forward from the towers, you will see the research block, also called the R block. Many faculty offices are located here and if you are from the School of Natural Sciences, you may get to use state-of-the-art equipment here like the X-ray diffraction machine, electron microscope, spectrometers, etc. Next to the R block is the SNU lake where you can witness peaceful sunrises or just hang out with your friends after classes are over. Now we move on to the academic blocks. The A and B blocks are designated to the School of Natural Sciences while C and D are more generally used for engineering lectures and laboratories. These blocks will be central to your SNU experience with everything ranging from seminars and lectures to club and society meetings happening here throughout the day. And for the time you feel hungry between classes, both A and B and C and D blocks host their very own atriums, where eateries and tuck shops are open throughout the day. Moving towards the hostels from the academic blocks, the SNU Central Library is hard to miss.
And in case the atriums weren't enough, the library has its very own cafeteria. For me, the cafe was always the cappuccino halt of the day, but many also regularly enjoy maggi, pastries and iced tea available here. Before going to the hostels, let us take a quick detour to the shopping arcade, right now kind of at an isolated edge of the campus. But as more blocks like the M and F blocks become active, the arcade wouldn't feel as far away. Here you can find everything necessary for your hostel life, from mosquito repellents to shelf mirrors, food items, novels and more. The hostels in SNU have two options, with and without air conditioning and a difference in pricing of course. There are twin sharing rooms available across three clusters of hostels and a few single rooms coming up in a new hostel cluster. Basic amenities like water coolers, microwaves etc are available at the ground floor of each hostel building along with a common room with high speed LAN access. And most of these hostels also host recreational rooms like TV rooms, table tennis room etc. And as we get close to the other end of the campus, we encounter the football fields across which is the Indoor Sports Complex or ISC for short. The sports setup in SNU is decent, we have basketball, squash, table tennis, badminton, lawn tennis, a chess garden and the gym. The soon to be open management block with SNU's very own auditorium and horse tables near the ISC are relatively new additions. There are other upcoming structures like the student recreation center near the library and the F block for arts and humanities, again not covered here. Overall SNU has definitely grown a lot in the past 4 years and there's always something to explore. <laughs> 